Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Podcast Network Asia. Network Asia. Along with all the lockdowns of the past couple of years were restrictions on our plans, goals, and dreams. A lot of things had to come to a stop. But that doesn't mean you can't start again to secure and boost your future. Meet Future Boost, Manulife's flexible life insurance plan with built-in investments that you can tailor to your insurance needs so you can supercharge your future. Start with the budget you have right now and boost it over time with an affordable and flexible life and financial protection plan. With Future Boost, you can secure every stage of your life with coverage that can be adjusted according to your goals and priorities and accelerate the growth of your funds with bonuses and rewards. Talk to a Manulife advisor or visit Manulife Philippines website for more information. Hey guys, welcome back to Small Talk, Small Conversations with Huge Impact. My name is Alec Cuenca and I'm your host. And before anything else, I would like to greet each and every one of you. Welcome back to the show. If this is your first time, then welcome to the show. I hope you learned something from this episode. And if you do enjoy this episode, go ahead and check out the other amazing episodes that we have here on Small Talk. If you are an avid listener of the podcast, then welcome back. I am so, so happy that you are here. It just shows that you are invested in bettering yourself so that you can make better decisions for yourself and for the people around you. But I just want to say, first and foremost, I am really grateful that you are here. I am so, so happy that I am not alone in this journey towards self-improvement, that you are becoming a better version of yourself so that you can inspire other people as well. So I'm I'm really, really grateful for this time, for this chance to share my insights and my experiences with you. And so for this episode... We're going to talk about something that I have been practicing a lot lately. We're going to talk about something that I have been trying to incorporate it into my daily habit. And we're all addicted to something. Some of us are addicted to alcohol, drinking alcohol. Some of us are addicted to doing drugs, smoking, vaping. Some of us are addicted to... Um, I don't know, different things that we're addicted to, but there's this one addiction that I think is really common for all of us, and it is the desire to control things, the wanting to control every bit of happening in our lives, every bit of situation, every bit of circumstance in our lives, we want to control that. Somewhat, we are control freaks. We want to have control over certain aspects of our lives, which is undeniably a human nature. But where it becomes a problem is if we obsess over the things that we want to control over. You know, and I don't blame you. I don't blame us even. It's in our human nature and you know, with the technology happening right now, it's also a great, um, had, has the technology that we have right now is a great catalyst for this kind of movement, for this um, trajectory of wanting to control things, wanting to have total control over things. I mean, just look at us right now. Before we would wait for our favorite program to be displayed or to be presented on television, but now... We can watch whatever we want to watch, whenever we want it, and wherever we want to watch it. And so we have total control over our entertainment. And that's the same with our food. You know, with, um, with uh, the, the delivery service apps available, we can choose whatever food we like, whenever we want it, and wherever we are. You know, if those delivery uh, apps are available there. But we have total control over that. And so the technology is providing us this illusion that we have this control over everything that is happening to us. And it gets so addicting and it's, it, we get so easily attached in trying to control things around us. But the truth is we cannot control everything that is happening to us. There's so many moving parts around us. Like we cannot 
assume total control over lives. Like, okay, you showed up, you listened to this episode, there's a part of you that was in control and you had certain control over a certain um, cert- over sort- certain areas in your life, but that doesn't mean you have total control over it. But we get so blinded thinking that we need to control every bit of it. And this, in turn, leads us to more stress. We become more anxious. We become more feel- fearful. We become worrying. We-, we worry a lot because we want to control the future, and that's when it all becomes complicated. When we want to start controlling the future because... One thing is for sure, the future is uncertain and we cannot try to make the uncertain certain because we have no way in doing that. Like it's impossible to think that you would know what would happen for the next three to six months. And I'm a huge fan of setting goals, of planning, but I also understand that there is a need to plan You know, I think, I believe that the best plan that we could make in our lives is when we plan to create a plan when things are not going according to plan. Like the best plan is a plan for when things are not... The best plan is a plan for when things are not going according to plan. The best plan is to plan the best the best plan is to plan when things are not going according to plan yeah that's a great quote i think we should we should um, note note that one with a great plan the best plan is to create a plan that is for when things are not going according to plan like because you never know what the future will bring you'll never know what tomorrow might bring there's a lot of changes. We never predicted this pandemic. We never predicted the war. We never predicted this amount of change in our lives. But still, it happened. And so we can try to plan for the next three to six months, try to control what will happen for the next three to six months. But there are things that are out of our control. And I believe that we all want the same thing, to not fight it. We know change is inevitable. We know change is always happening. And so it is a deep, a, there's a deep reason, there's a deep part of us that wants to not fight, wants to not control, wants to not resist, wants to not hold back, and wants to not overthink things. And for the past months, I have been trying to figure out a way or try not to let resist, try to let just things be as it is, accept the things, the situations that are happening um, happening in our lives for what it is. Learning to accept and learning to let go of the things that are not really within our control. Acceptance, understanding that it is what it is. You know, it's kind of cliche, but sometimes letting life be as it actually is, is the best way to appreciate it and to live it. And so I really want us to understand what it is or what does it take for us to do that, to not resist, to not fight, to not suffer that much. And I learned that by doing one thing. It's doing, it's by, it's by surrendering. It's for us to surrender completely and fully to what it is we are currently situated. Um, so what it is, what our, to what our current situation is. And I don't think a lot of people understand what surrender really means. A lot of us think that surrender is synonymous to giving up. We'd like to think that surrender is the same for, you know, raising the white flag and saying, okay, I quit, I give up. But no, it's not like that. And so I want you to think of an area in your life where you want 
to surrender. Just any area in your life. Well, look at the different areas in your life and figure out what's what area has the most resistance. Where's that most struggle, most friction? Maybe you can find yourself there wanting to control things that are out of your control. In the areas that you're struggling with, maybe there's you not surrendering that current um, situation and you're obsessing on trying to control everything that is happening in that area in your life. He'll keep that question in your mind as we go through this podcast episode. What is one thing that you need to surrender? I have experienced a couple of like great um, you know, moments in my life where I was called upon to surrender. The first one was with my ex. You know, my ex was a big part of my life. We were together since we were 13 years old. We were together for 11 years. And everything that I learned growing up basically basically came from her. Everything that I tried, that I experienced, uh, a lot of my first came with her. So it was a hard time for me when I learned that we were um, breaking up, especially for the first time. It was a hard thing for me. And you know what I did? I fought for it. I, I tried to resist that fact that, you know, maybe we were kind of toxic before. Maybe uh, the feelings were not as the same as before. And I, I tried to fight that. I tried to resist that. I tried to hold back from that reality. So what I did is when we broke up for the first time, we got back together. We tried again. Um, and then we broke up again. And then we tried again. So we broke up for a total of three times. For the first two times, I tried and I tried. I fought back. I resisted. We resisted for what was really happening in our lives. And so I guess the, the only silver lining, the silver lining that we can get from that, we tried. We fought. We knew exactly that it was something that is beyond our control because we did our parts, right? And so... On the third time that we were called to, um, the third time that we had to separate, it was somewhat clear to me that I had a choice. I had two choices. First is to try to fight, try to resist, try to hold back, or I could try to surrender. And that's what I did. I surrendered. I when I I could clearly remember the drive back home after the breakup, I had to ask myself, can I solve this? Can I understand this problem? And I realized that I didn't, that I didn't have the capabilities to understand what was happening, to try to find a way to fix that solution. And there will come a lot of times in our lives that we won't know how to deal with our problems. It's beyond us. It's virgin territories. I've read a lot of books. I have, you know, done a lot of, um, I've, I've, we've tried to make it work, make it extend for like two, three years more. But for us and for me specifically, we knew, I knew that it was something beyond our control. It was something that we don't know how to fix. And so when I learned that, I said, I need to surrender. I need to let go. I needed to surrender. And so that was the first one. The second one was last year I experienced my highest of highs, you know, the best phase of my life. I achieved all of my goals. I was so successful in whatever I was doing. I had a lot of friends. I had uh, I had a lot of money. I was living comfortably and secure. And I was enjoying every beat, bit of my moment. And so I said to myself, well, I know that now. So let me just do that again for the next year. So I planned out 2022. I said, okay, I'll have this, I'll have that, I'll do this, I'll do that. Um, these are my goals. But there was so much friction. You know, there was so much changes. And I've made a couple of mistakes financially, you know, made some financial mistakes as well that led me to experiencing a life that is full of resistance. It's like the, la the universe said to me, nope, that is not for you. And when I felt that, it was hard because I really desired these things. I really wanted to have these things. But for me, I realized, you know, in retrospect, that maybe those are not the best things for me. 
So I had to surrender. I had to surrender all my desires, all my wants, and realign myself on what do I really want in my life. I was so hooked up in the material things. I'm not going to lie to that. There was a phase in my life where I was so, so attached to the material things in my life, and I just realized that I needed to let them go. I needed to surrender that because that's not what God wants me to have. Maybe I deserve more. Maybe I deserve um, anything greater than that. Maybe that was just not for me. And so I needed to surrender. And it was hard. Surrendering, letting go, acceptance, these are hard things. But these are practices that we can instill in our daily lives. Like every single day, we can try to practice that. And here's the thing. Surrendering is a daily practice. You don't just get to surrender yesterday and think or expect that every single day would be great. Like every day we are called upon to surrender. Every single day we are tempted to not surrender, to not let go, to try to resist, to try to fight, to try to hold back. So every day we need to remind ourselves that we need to surrender. We need to create a... Um, um, or we need to instill that habit of surrendering in our in our daily lives. Okay, it's a daily practice. And up until now, I'm practicing surrendering. And when I wake up, I try to uh, pray and let go of anything, and then try to be intentional with everything that I'm doing. And I'm going to share with you some tips on how to practically surrender in the next episode. But for now, I just want you to sh- to understand what it is, or what does it really mean to surrender. Why is it important? Okay? And in understanding, in, 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 in the stories that I shared with you, it's not, okay, I learned this and in, in I, I, I became introspective towards this. And I learned that in those scenarios, I didn't give up. Okay? That's the important thing. When we surrender, we don't give up. I didn't give up. I didn't give up but I did give it up. I didn't give up. I gave it up. And what was it? It is the need for control, the desire to control everything that is happening in our lives. And if you just think about it, like every success that you had before, there were a lot of moving parts. And you didn't even know if you would make it through the different struggles in your past, but there was one thing, the one person, something or someone that helped you, that made you inspired and uh, gave you ideas on how you could overcome that. So there are a lot of moving parts, and it's so selfish to think that everything that is happening to us is basically we made that. Like There's so many coincidences happening every single moment, and it's just unfair to think that Everything that is happening um, in our lives is dependent on us solely. Like there's luck involved, there's the universe involved, there's, there's life involved, there's God involved to make sure that everything aligns in that perfect moment, right? So it's, it's that. It's understanding that it's not just us being in control of our lives. There's so many aspects that we don't have control over. And we need to give it up, the control or the need to control those things. I understood that there's only one task that I, need to, that I needed to do. And it was, I need to do my part and I need to let go. And a lot of us should be reminded of that as well. You do your part and then you let it go. You do your part. And then you let it go. Surrendering means trusting the process and letting go of the results. Believe, and if that is not a show of trust, a show of faith, a show of integrity in the world, I don't uh, about surrender. Then I don't know what is. We just need to do our parts, and then and then we need to let the future go. We need to be okay. We need to be satisfied. We need, we need to be fulfilled but just by doing our part. Because in doing so, the expectations will lower and life will become an elegant surprise. Once you learn to lower down your expectation, everything 
becomes a surprise, a magical moment in your life. And I have been surrendering for the past couple of weeks. And I realized that everything starts to become more beautiful, more amazing, more majestic, more pure, more authentic, and just more bliss, more blissful. Life becomes exciting. Every single day, I am excited to wake up and to see what miracles are ahead, what opportunities are ahead, what exciting moments can I savor today. And surrendering, surrendering in Sanskrit is samprada. It means to give yourself wholly to something. Like you become whole, you surrender wholly and fully to that particular moment in whatever you're doing. I was playing Frisbee last night, Ultimate Frisbee, um, and I was so in the moment. And I realized that I surrendered. I didn't think of my problems and my business and my content creation, the work that I needed to do, the issues that I had, the past problems that I have, what I need to do next week and tomorrow. I didn't think of all of those things. I was fully immersed, my mind, my body, my heart, and my soul soul fully immersed in whatever I am doing last night. And it was playing Ultimate Frisbee. And I realized that that was a choice of surrender. I surrendered everything. And I'm just going to give myself wholly to the present moment, which is the game of Ultimate. And it was such an amazing experience because everything was so nice. Like I, I, It's like I am experiencing this game for the very first time in my life. It was so vivid. It was so beautiful. And that's what surrendering does to your life. It makes everything becomes a surprise. It makes everything a surprise. And when we learn to surrender, we learn how to flow like water, not resist, not hold back, to not force things. And the grace of letting go in the moment without torturing yourself with self-doubt and overthinking that is the main point of surrendering. So I'm going to leave you guys with three questions. Three questions that you should ask this week for yourself to know how surrendered are you in your life. And I want to hear your answers. I want you to share your answers of how surrendered are you in your life, in your Instagram. Do not forget to tag me at Alec Cuenca. At Small Talk Podcast is not yet avail- uh, is not active anymore. So please do not forget to tag me at Alec Cuenca. And ask yourself, how surrendered are you? And you can know that by asking yourself these three questions. The first one is how much do you want to control everything? From a scale of 0 to 10, how much do you want to control everything that is happening in your life? The goal is to make it lower. But you got to be brutally honest with yourself first. If it's an 8, if it's a 9, then say that. And find a way you can get it to 8. Find a way you can get it to 7 or 6. Okay. The second question is... How much do you feel the need to be right? Because the main enemy of surrender is our ego. Our ego wants to think that we are doing this and we did all of these things. Okay? But we need to let that go as well. If you are surrendering, we need to let go of our ego. So how much do you feel the need to be right? So if it's a high number, try to to low it down. And the next one is how much do you enjoy life? This is a great way to gauge how surrendered are you. If you are enjoying life to the fullest, then that means you've surrendered a lot of things. If you are not enjoying life to the fullest, that means you are yet to surrender the things that you need to surrender. Okay? So ask yourself these questions. How much do you want to control everything? How much do you feel the need to be right? And how much do you enjoy life? And if you ask those questions, you would know how surrendered are you. And so... That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoy this one. If you do, go ahead and share it with your friends, with your family, to just share the power of surrendering, why we need to surrender at this current moment. And please listen to my other podcast, which is a very light, very comedic style of learning about how to be an adult. It's called the Don't Grow Up Podcast. Um, it's one. It's the one with the yellow, um, the yellow background. So if you want... To see a lighter version of me, um, somewhat 
talking about my worst mistakes in life and the biggest lessons that I learned from them in a humoric way, in a humorous way, um, go ahead and check out Don't Grow Up Podcast. I, I have that podcast with my cousin. And also, if you want to deep dive into these topics, please join my group coaching sessions. I have a lot of free workshops incoming and a lot of paid ones as well, uh, paid events, amazing events, exclusive events for people who want to meet um, meet me or have a conversation with me. I have a lot of in events incoming, so make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, to my TikTok, and make sure that you follow me on Instagram because that's where I will be announcing all of the good stuff that I will be having for the next couple of months. And so, yeah, thank you so much for listening. This is Alec Cuenca. This is Small Talk, Small Conversations with Huge Impact. And I'll talk to you guys next minute, next episode. Peace. The views and opinions expressed by the podcast creators, hosts, and guests do not necessarily reflect the official policy and position of Podcast Network Asia, the hosts of the program, or other programs of the network. Any content provided by the people on the podcast are of their own opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything.